Uh, I've been talking about safety valves. I've been working on them the last couple of days. And what I discovered is that the uh, blowdown ring, which is this little tiny ring here, come up close as I can, uh, is not fitted tight enough to the valve seat. And here's one here all put, put together. And see. Valve seat. Yeah, I can see it over there. And then this ring is adjustable for the blowdown. Now it also... It's also important for the popping. Now, if, if you lower it down and you get right on the edge of that ready to pop, it'll and then go, uh, it won't pop like a pop. I like that pop sound. And that has a lot to do with how close this ring is. So the closer this ring, the quicker it'll pop. And then, of course, the shutdown. So this is an important thing, I think, on the safety valve. It won't uh, make a difference if it wasn't there, but it does make it nicer. And uh, what I found out is that the counter bore in here, little counter bore, is too big. It's t it's like 554, and it should be 537, 38, 39, 40, 540. So it's about 10 thousandths too big. Believe it or not, that makes a difference. And I made this out of some propeller shaft that I had. It was a um, um, propeller shaft uh, somewhere I got it. Who knows where it came from. And uh, it's made out of that Tobin bronze. And boy, that's tough stuff. And I thought it would be better because it wouldn't crush. Eh, to tell you the truth, it really don't matter that much. Not that, not that the, the little 172 little point on a set screw, like it's a, just a hex, little hex screw that I make, uh, goes into these little grooves and stops it from turning once I set it. It doesn't tighten it up that much. It doesn't push it that much. You, you break the screw before you squash that. All right, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to, uh, cut the grooves down here, and this is a, a rotary table with an indexing plate on it. This is an in, I got the index plate on here, and there's 45 notches around the thing. So 45 divided by 360. I mean, this is in a rocket science tree, right? Comes out to eight degrees. And on this, I got it on this particular plate here. You have to calculate to get the right plate, and there's a whole formula for that. But I didn't need all that. The one, two cuts. Back in the same hole, 8 degrees. 8 degrees. So I got it marked up here, 0. So 8 degrees all the way around. Now, I made a... went to McMaster Car this morning, and I bought this piece of 3 quarter by 36 inch long brass stock, 360 bronze. Brass, bronze, whatever. And I turned... I figured, oh, I'm going to be a genius and turn it down to 11 sixteenths with the sizes. They had 11 sixteenths, which is an odd all sides to get but what happened when I turn this down it's not the same here as it is here and it's all over the map so it doesn't matter once the grooves in there you'll never see that but I need it for the indication so I used the, the other piece I had that hasn't been turned yet and I got zero here and zero there and now I'm straight across here because it's only I don't think I don't know it's, it's like uh, an eighth of an inch not even that 30 30 30 thousands 35 thousands deep so it's not going to, if you're off 5,000 in the middle, it's going to be odd grooves. It doesn't, still doesn't make any difference because each one's going to have a little, going to cut them all off after I tap them or whatnot. But I got the indicator set on a 45 degree here, and that's where I'm going to be cutting right along there. And um, so that's where I indicate it. I don't care where it is. the other place. But uh, I'm going to put the end mill in here and then pick up the sides and set it up and so on. I got to put this one in now. Now what I did was... Um, I turned this diameter down, fits in the end of the rotary table, half inch, and then I put a 5 16 uh, bolt there to hold it tight, and that drives it. And of course, you got the center on this end, and I just set it up so I could take it out by screwing the center back and take it out, put this one in, and turn it. I was doing both at the same time, um, and so I have two sets of these, and these will make up the rings, the blow down, the new blow down rings. Uh, the other ones, I don't know if I could ever use them. I'll put them on the side. Maybe I can use them. I don't know. But um, so I'm going to set up the end mill now. I'm going to get that all set, and then I'm going to start a cut, and then we'll come back. Get to zero. 
there's zero. Now I'm going to start the machine and take a cut. That's just, just for the hell of it. Zero everything out there. That's where the automatic feed comes in. Run it all the way down to here. When I get down to there, I'll set the stop so it hits against here. See, stops the machine. So now, while that's running, while that's running, I'll go over and I'll turn the other piece down. But that takes a while. I have to watch both machines. But this one here, it'll hit the stop, and that's it. So, good old rotary table. We're actually indexing head now. But, um, While that thing's running over there, I'm turning this down now. What the heck are you doing holding on to it like that? Well, if I let go, watch. That's why I need a steady rest or a follow rest. I don't have one, so we use this here. Just hold it like that. Okay, it's not the safest way, but I could use the hammer. We've done it before. When I was at De La Val, we had a big lead weight. We put two ball bearings on there with a handle. Just put it on the top there. I stopped to keep the weight down. That worked great. The thing we made up worked pretty good. I don't have one here. I don't need one. See the hammer right like that just kind of does it. Like I'm not even just the weight of that hammer. And you know something? I'm looking at this now. Maybe it is better to turn them down because I see a little bounce in it. Nothing straight, you know. There you go. No hands, Ma. Now that's got about another two inches to go. It'll take a while to get there. I run this down. While that's over there. Get this down the other end. Take another cut. There's 45 of them to go. Probably about 40 to go. I don't even think I did five yet. Eh, yeah, but it's all machine work, you know. One. Two. Okay. Go over here now. Should be near the end of the cut. Uh, got another, about another inch to go. No big deal. It's going to hit against the stop and just shut off. Now well, that's the way it is. Two for the price of one. Probably stop now. I got 16, 15 inches here I'm cutting. Brass. I'm using high speed steel tool bit. No carbide. Carbide pushes too much. Really vibrate then. It's brass, so it cuts no problem. Nice tool with a rake on it. Let me go check that. All right, machine work at its best. Here we go. I don't even have time to take a whiz. How's that? Just got to know what you're doing. That's all. Got to know what you're doing. Just sit here and watch. And who says you can't run two machines at one time? You can, too. This one's got the stop set. I trust it. Hits there. Bing, stops. While I'm running over there, every time, once in a while, I take a look. I saw, see the handle turning. I know it's not done. Before well, I stop the handle, okay. Run it back, wrap it reverse. One, two. Start to cut again. Go all the way down. 45 times you got to do it. Machine work, guys. Machine work. That's what it's about. What do you want to do? Sit there, push your button, cycle start. This is fun, man. Beautiful. Well, that's all from uh, Mercer Local Motor Works for today. And uh, milling away. I guess we'll see you again on the next video. And thanks for watching.